Today's New Testament reading is the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 8th chapter. Soon afterward, Jesus went on through cities and villages, proclaiming and bringing the good news of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him, and also some women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary, called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out, and Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod's household manager, and Susanna, and many others who provided for them out of their own means. And when a great crowd was gathering, and people from town after town came to him, he said in a parable, A sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell along the path and was trampled underfoot, and the birds of the air devoured it. And some fell on the rock, and as it grew up it withered away, because it had no moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up with it and choked it. And some fell into good soil, and grew and yielded a hundredfold. As he said these things he called out, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And when his disciples asked him what this parable meant, he said, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of God, but for others they are in parables, so that seeing they may not see, and hearing they may not understand. Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God, the ones along the path are those who have heard, Then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts, so that they may not believe and be saved. And the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear the word, receive it with joy, but these have no root. They believe for a while, and in time of testing, fall away. And as for what fell among the thorns, they are those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by the cares and riches and pleasures of life, and their fruit does not mature. As for that in the good soil, they are those who, hearing the word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart, and bear fruit with patience. No one, after lighting a lamp, covers it with a jar or puts it under a bed, but puts it on a stand, so that those who enter may see the light. For nothing is hidden that will not be made manifest, nor is anything secret that will not be known and come to light. Take care, then, how you hear. For the one who has, more will be given to him. And from the one who has not, even what he thinks that he has will be taken away. Then his mother and his brothers came to them, but they could not reach him because of the crowd. And he was told, Your mother and your brothers are standing outside desiring to see you. But he answered them, My mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God. And do it. This is the word of the Lord. For today's meditation on God's word, we welcome Pastor Aaron Kangas. Good morning, everyone. Did you ever know somebody who was a believer but seemed to fall away? Or did you try to share God's word with someone but they didn't seem to respond positively? This resistance to God's word is that which is also addressed in the text for today. For even in Jesus' ministry, many people rejected and resisted his teaching, and yet he went on through cities and villages, proclaiming and bringing the good news of the kingdom of God. For that is really what Jesus was all about in his life and ministry. It was proclaiming and heralding the good news, the good news of the incoming reign of God. And he did this wherever he was, regardless of their reaction. Jesus, in this first verse, shows that he was and is the fulfillment of the sower in the following parable. For as Jesus explained to his disciples, the seed is the word of God, and its sowing is the preaching of his word, even in places where the seed shouldn't seem to be able to grow. Some of the seed does get trampled, some gets stolen, some gets choked out after it has been planted. Why is there this resistance to the message? Well, because it is contrary to the culture of this world a world of sin and selfishness, a world of death, a world which worships the false gods of good deeds or good feelings. These are all gods which just lead to the well-trampled pathway of death and despair. But the word of God leads to another path, a path of life, a path 
that tells us of what God has done for us that we could not. For even in the message and illustration of the soil, we see that the planting home of the seed is the work of the Holy Spirit, working through the preaching of his word, through the life-giving watering of baptism, the ongoing root feeding of the Lord's Supper and the study of his word. For faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The Holy Spirit plants the word of God and creates faith from it. And that is why Jesus said after his telling of the parable, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Because this word gives life and overthrows the culture of death, the devil, the world, and our flesh are hostile to this word. The devil tries to steal or trample it, tries to silence it by persecuting the church, or by raising false teachers and preachers, by mocking it and twisting that word. The world appeals to the laziness and pride of our flesh in order to seek salvation in things of this life or in our works, or to even try to slowly choke out the faith by lowering the priority of attendance at church and the hearing of God's word. The world also points out adversity in our lives in order to blame God for it rather than sin, so that instead of turning to him at such times for strength and mercy, we may be tempted to doubt his love and fall into unbelief and despair. This is also tragic, because the answer to all of life's questions and troubles, and the healing and strength that we need in the midst of our thorns, our feelings of being trampled upon, our rock-hard hearts, is found only in the Word of God. For it is only in that Word where there is hope, strength, and life. What is that Word of good news? What is that Word of life? It is this. God has defeated the accusations and false teachings of the devil, the world, and our flesh. He has given us something that we could not earn. Therefore, as Jesus said to the sinful woman at the end of Luke, chapter 7, let this word of life be sown into your ears. Your sins are forgiven you, for Jesus' sake. It is this phrase that gives life, because Jesus is not just the sower, he is the seed, the seed which had to die in order to bring forth life. And so Jesus died on the cross for your sin. His flesh was planted in the ground for three days to burst forth with resurrection victory over our ultimate enemy, which is death. This is where the life-giving reign of God's kingdom comes, in the preaching of his word of forgiveness in Jesus Christ. And this word has been sown and planted into your ears by his word in holy baptism, in faithful preaching and teaching, and in the receiving of the word made flesh. Christ's body and blood and the bread and wine, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of your sin. So pray for this world and your neighbors, and wherever you are, share this good news, which overthrows the reign of the devil and death. And do it more than once, letting the Holy Spirit prepare the soil and plant it home. And do not have any fear of your faith being taken from you, for God has given you ears to hear, and he will hold you fast to bear fruits of repentance and faith and love. Come to the cross where that faith is rooted and sustained by the Holy Spirit in his sacraments and the study of his word and hear once more that you are given pardon, peace, and forgiveness in life for the sake of Jesus Christ, your Savior. Amen.